Yo, what up, everybody? It's your boy Broadway Joe. I'm on 145th and Broadway, the heart of Harlem. I'm that, and I'm about to ask, is gentrification good or bad for the neighborhood? Check it out. All right. So first, what's your name? Where are you from? My name is Alessandro. I'm from upstate New York, Rotterdam, New York. All right. So the question I'm asking is, uh, is gentr gentrification good or bad? Uh, gentrification is a mixed word. I would say bad overall for the people who live in a certain area. Um, changing an era, making it easier to live in for more people, making more businesses is a good thing. But the, the word, if you're going to define gentrification, it's a bad thing, I guess you could say. But what do you say to the people that, uh, like, Harlem, let's say, maybe 20 years ago wasn't, was a lot of burnt down houses and not a lot of restaurants. And now with things changing, those things have came. Yeah. So I would call that progress. I wouldn't use the word gentrification since it's got such a negative connotation. Um, I would say that would be. Now, there are places where people have just been moved out and just new buildings put there with no concern. Where there's some like the building I live in, there's been a concern for the locals. And if you want to call that gentrification, yes or no. I, I don't know, but I would say you need to you need to involve the community, the community leaders that people have lived here, and yeah, make it better for people. Because you know what, a lot of people who stay in the neighborhood like having more restaurants, more business. So if they want to call it that, it's good for them too. So, but it's also it also could be good for them if they own their property. Now their property value has gone up. So don't you look at it from that point of view that it could be a really good thing? It could be great. However. I think at least it was, sorry, in New York City, a lot of people don't own their, you know, own these places. A lot of people are renting. And these people may have rented for, they might own their place, but have rented for, you know, their whole life, 20, 30 years. And I don't think they should be kicked out of their place just so someone can move in. I think it needs to be a, a mixed bag of sorts. But, yeah, it definitely helps with restaurants. And, yeah, property value goes up. But then you're also squeezing people out who may not make enough money or may not have that sort of, income they, they may be hard working they may have lived here forever but yeah what, what can we do uh this is the last question what can we do to help i guess control gentrification where some people would say it's already out of hand but where it doesn't get out of hand um i mean you need policy makers you need people in the office who are really fighting for the local people yeah, but you can't really pass a policy that you can't raise the rent i don't see how i mean it's it's all about how you zone how you zone the buildings, how you, uh, how you give grants to certain uh, companies, tax breaks, everything like that. So there, there is a lot of little intricacies. You could also, I mean, people need to band together. People don't know their rights. That's one thing. Education's huge. People don't know that they can stay. People, people need, I mean, people need jobs. People need to want to get better. I don't know. It's, I think it's a really deep question, a good question. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Right. So what's your name? Where are you from? I'm Tony. I'm from over here, 145th and Broadway. All right, so the question I'm asking is, how do you feel about gentrification? Like, people moving in from other communities and making the rent high and all that. It makes people feel bad because a lot of people who have been living here years, now the rent go up, you know? So now it's white neighborhood. It became, this is a Latino neighborhood, you understand? So now it's coming now. People now can't afford their rent no more. So that's the way I feel. What can we do to change it, uh, make it better? Take all the white people out. <laughs> do, you do you think white people that move into the neighborhood are, are, are doing bad things or, or doing something bad to the community? Basically, they're not, but they're not helping with the community. What can they do to help? Uh, go back to downtown. <laughs> <laughs> go back, go back where they came from, basically? Yeah, back to where it came from. Because now we get to fall. You know what I'm saying? Our people living here for years. Now um, now we got to work hard before we can pay our bills. But what do you say to the people, the, them who, they might be like, you know, there's Latinos who come from different countries to move in here, move over here. Why they don't go back to where they're from? How, how do you feel if they was to say that to you? Um, what I would say about that, I would say, you know what? You're right. But we've been living here for years. This is our country. My brother to us, we American too. So we was born here. So, you know, we got kids who live here and we're trying to go up for better. So, you know, that's the way I look at it. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. All right. So first, what's your name? Where you're from? 
I'm, uh, I'm from the Dominican Republic DR. All right. My name is George Caminero. All right. So the question I'm asking is, how do you feel about gentrification and the neighborhood changing? Well, I tell you what, this is something that nobody likes it, but it's something that none of us are going to be able to stop. Uh, why you say that? For instance, the people in power are supposed to be looking out for uh, people's best interests. They haven't done nothing from the very beginning. They had never done nothing to, to better the community for the people who live in here a long time ago to stay on it, to stay in it. So, Do you think that now that things are getting cleaned up and there's a lot of police presence, is because different kind of people moved in the neighborhood? I would say so. Mostly Caucasian, white. Yes. It's a fact. Before, we were not getting that much policing, but nowadays, it's a fact. You see, like that, a lot of policemen watching the neighborhood, but it's not really, I, I believe that it's not really to watch us, minority. I might not be biased, but that's the truth. You think they're here to protect the white people? Very likely. Very likely. So there's nothing we could do? You don't think there's nothing we could do to save the neighborhood? As far as like to prevent gentrification, it's been going on for a while. It just happened. Like lately, it's been like the massive uh, location, all the ethnic groups, they have the, the financial resources to rent an apartment like that for three or $4,000. So, minority, black, Dominican, and what have you, very, this is not very likely. You know, high percent of your people making an income like the over fifty or sixty thousand dollars in the neighborhood. I know that. I'm a retired construction worker, and I can tell you better. So there's no hope for us. You saying? <laughs> this 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 is really, to be honest, in the way, in the logical perspective that I looked at, is like the hopeless. As I stated earlier, the people in the position to help this community, they haven't. Do nothing from the beginnings in this phenomenon called gentrification started. So what do you think the, the, the people in the government should do? The people who are on top, what should they do to help the, the, the locals, the people who've been living here for 20, 30, 40 years? Well, one thing they should have done in the beginning was like that. They helped uh, to renovate at uh, low income apartment affordable for the people who are in that bracket. Like for people who then who do not make like over thirty thousand dollars, that they be able to say in the neighborhood, like when the landlord let the apartment fall apart, some of them burned the, the building. You familiar with some of the yeah, things? Yeah, yeah. In the neighborhood, for instance, you see the building back of you. What happened? All those people being displayed, like nearly fifty people. Where were the people going to be living when that building be renovated? It's not going to be none of us. That is for certain. That is a a fact that we have to live with it. So, like I said. Landlord, they prefer those people. Why? Because they have the affordability. It might say, quote unquote, the, uh, the luxury to pay five thousand, six thousand dollars for an apartment. I'm not able, and I was making over seventy-five thousand dollars a year. I was working construction, and I believe me, I couldn't. I had three kids to educate, send them to college. I, I could never, you know, afford that luxury. Uh, Are you able to? I'm I'm definitely not. Uh, I'm out here hustling. That's why I'm doing this. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get money to to, to freelancer. Yeah, I do this on my own. Okay. So I'm trying to. If I had money for three four thousand dollars apartment, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be here. You see what I'm saying? No, uh, like very high percentage in our neighborhood or community, if you please, they have the affordability, financially speaking, to pay four to five or six thousand dollars an apartment. I seen like that by coming. By the way, allow me to put that as an example. In a studio, like uh, uh, twenty, twenty-one hundred dollar, for studio. That's crazy. You see, what I'm saying? it's the same thing happening in Brooklyn. Okay. So this is not uh, like that. Only a phenomenon happened in Manhattan. Mostly, this is the financial city of the world. More so, because it is believed that people who live in Manhattan some kind of way they had the affordability of the luxury financially speaking to afford an apartment or that i mentioned financially speaking that is brooklyn is another thing okay all right well thank you so much for your time thank you all right so what's up guys is your boy broadway joel here hopefully you guys enjoyed the video answer the question i asked in the street in the comment section definitely like and subscribe and if you guys want to follow me, follow me on Instagram, Broadway Joel, and follow me on Twitter, Broadway Joel with the number two.
Peace.